Hi folks, it's Florida Man again, with a new entry in the Strategic Maxims series. Win through your actions, never through argument. That idea comes from Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power and its Law Number 9. I recognize that, because of what my point is, this may be a controversial video, so I should first make it clear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you shouldn't present other people with your suggested plans and ideas and your reasons for pushing those plans and ideas. That's just part of being in an alliance and working with others. Rather, what I'm saying is that if, after you've done that, the person you're talking to is still resistant and keeps coming up with reasons not to do what you want to do, you need to just leave it alone. Don't argue. It almost never works. Really. In normal life, arguments are more effective than they are in diplomacy, where people tend to have their own set plans already that they don't want to see disrupted. But even in normal life, how often do you think you've actually persuaded someone of something by arguing with them? As someone who would often boldly argue about politics and religion with friends and family members as a young man, I can assure you that my arguments, however clever, never changed anyone's mind. Even if you seem to convince someone with your arguments, if you did so by overcoming their resistance, you've put them in the position of feeling resistant to your ideas. There's an old saying that I think sums this up better than anything else I could say. He who is convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. An ally that feels you're pressuring them into things will usually start considering changing sides, or at least react by becoming less invested in your alliance. And this general concept has been a widely recognized truth for many years, to the point that it's also essentially one of Dale Carnegie's tips in the classic self-help book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. The difficulty here is actually that diplomacy players are unusually clever and persuasive, and therefore they tend to be of the opinion that they can successfully persuade other players with their arguments to do what they want if only they just argue with them enough. However, what they're not taking into account is how strong-willed and stubborn diplomacy players tend to be. What I've observed is that if I try to argue about strategy with a player and they don't agree to my strategy and I don't agree to their strategy, giving more and better reasons or arguing the reasons with greater force does not usually make a positive difference. The ultimate result is that I waste my time or I end up with an unreliable so-called ally, an alienated person who was a potential ally, or an overt enemy. What will happen, if I'm already allied with that person, is that if neither of us backs down, one of us will usually end up stabbing the other, often to our mutual detriment. If we haven't formally allied ourselves, at least one of us will try to find an alliance against the other at that point. In short, any temporary triumph you think you gained through argument will tend to be a Pyrrhic victory. The resentment and ill will that arguing stirs up is usually stronger and more lasting than any momentary change of opinion, and in diplomacy, arguing with the other players will almost always diminish rather than increase your options. On the other hand, it is much more powerful to get others to agree with you through your actions without saying a word. If you think the person you're speaking with isn't going to do what you need done, you should try to leave on friendly terms and then make an alliance with the other party you were considering, or if you can, bring a few armies around to their home centers so they can either reconsider or face occupation. Conversely, if someone you hope to work with asks you to do something, consider just doing it, or making it seem as if you're doing it, or just doing what serves your purposes and explaining afterward. Asking forgiveness in these cases is better than spending the entirety of the negotiations period arguing over whether you should be given permission to do something. The major disagreements that I've observed occur in diplomacy are over who to fight and who to work with, how to fight, the split of centers, and whether to accept a draw. If you disagree on the first point, who to fight and who to work with, that signals that you should probably prepare to fight the person you're speaking with. If you disagree about how to fight, you should assess whether the other person's plan is decent, and if it is, you should just go with it. If the plan just opens you up for a stab, you should agree to the plan and then move with the expectation that you're about to be stabbed. If you disagree about the split of centers, you should pretend to be accommodating and then do everything you can to prepare for a fight. 
If you disagree about whether to accept a draw, I think it's okay to be a little bit more argumentative, because it's kind of an existential question. But if that doesn't work, you should definitely prepare for a fight, and it's even more certain to happen there than under other circumstances. You may have noticed a pattern here. Whenever the disagreement is impossible or difficult to bridge, and it's about something important, it causes a fight. Don't be surprised that things turn out that way. That's how divorces happen. People have irreconcilable differences. And do you really expect your diplomacy alliance to be more enduring than the average marriage today? I'll give a couple of examples just to solidify the point. In this game, France and Germany were having otherwise pleasant opening negotiations, but they disagreed about the disposition of Burgundy and Belgium. Specifically, France wanted to pass through Burgundy and take Belgium, and Germany disagreed with that. The disagreement wasn't resolved, they argued, and they ended up struggling against each other, with the end result that England was the beneficiary. In another game, France and England were working quite pleasantly together, and very effectively, but they ended up disagreeing about how to break through a defensive wall, and about the fact that one of them was still advancing marginally, while the other was not, resulting in betrayal. And in the end, Turkey won. The examples of this are pretty much endless, but it just goes to say that what Otto von Bismarck said was right, at least as far as his words apply to diplomacy. The great questions of the day will not be settled by means of speeches and majority decisions, but by iron and blood. Hope you've enjoyed this Strategic Maxims video, and if so, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and maybe share with another diplomacy fan. Feel free to comment your thoughts below, and until next time, Florida Man out.